A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order on the western frontier of the United States. It was his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, that brought peace and security to the new country, and the memory of his deeds will remain as long as the memory of the early West itself. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading south for the Rio Grande! For more than 30 years, old Asa Wiggs had prescribed for the aches and pains that afflicted the citizens of Harmony and the surrounding territory. A widower with a grown daughter, he was loved by those who knew him for his wisdom and tolerance. He and his daughter, Nancy, made their home in a rambling frame house, and the dim parlor served him for an office. It's there we see him late one morning. Just a second. Hmm? Oh, howdy, howdy. Thought it might be you, Graham. Yes. <laughs> You're the only fellow new enough in town to knock on the door before coming in. Step in, step in. I will. Uh, have a chair. Mighty glad to see you. Kind of hoped you'd be around before long. I'll stand, thank you. Uh, something wrong? You called on Nate Castle last night. Oh, that. <laughs> Shucks, Nate sort of used to me in my ways of doctrine, so he sent his boy in to get me. Mrs. And I... Castle sent for me first. I examined her husband and prescribed the correct treatment. Now, you must I particularly that... told him that he must do no more riding until his condition was better. Now, I know. But you ruined what good I might have done. This morning, when I went to his place, I found him in the saddle. He just returned from a ride to Spring Valley and back. He told me if you had said he could ride if he wished. Uh-huh, I did. Any doctor who would tell Nate Castle that isn't fit to practice medicine. Uh, just what you tell him, son. I told him the truth. I told him that if he didn't have rest and quiet, he wouldn't live the year out. You did, huh? Sit down. No, I'd rather... Young fella, you sit down. Well? Now then, you answer me this and you answer me straight. Even with all this rest and quiet you're talking about, how long do you figure Nate's going to last? He's in bad shape. A year at the most. Mm -hmm. And if Nate goes on the way he always has, riding and drinking and cussing when he's a mind to, how much would you take off that year? Six month months, possibly. Anyhow, he won't live a year, that's certain. How well acquainted did you get with Nate in the months you've been here? I never met him until I called on him the other day. Just the same, I feel competent to say that... Not so fast, young fella. Don't be in such an all-fired hurry to tell me what you're competent to do. The fact is, you ain't acquainted with Nate hardly at all, are you? Well, no. But just the same, you think you're capable of telling him what to do. Are you trying to tell me I didn't diagnose his case correctly? Nothing of the kind. 
son. What I'm getting at is this. Some folks, uh, they're more common back east where you come from than around here. Some folks would think a few extra months added on to their lives would be worth all the nursing and coddling and quiet and rest they'd have to stand for in the meantime. But I don't... Don't butt in. Now, that's just one kind of folks, young fella. But if you got to know a Nate, you'd see where he's different. Nate, he's the kind that wouldn't give a continental to go on living if he couldn't have the feel of a frisky horse under him once or so a day. <laughs> when his throat's dry, he's plumb convinced there ain't nothing like whiskey to lay the dust. And when somebody or something's crossed him, he'd like to bust till he lets loose a flow of language to ease off the pressure. Now, you tell a gent like Nate he ain't to ride or drink or lose his temper, and he'll just naturally lose all interest in living anymore. And if you put it up to him straight, one day he'll live in the way he likes, again a year the way that's good for him, he'll take the day and tell you to take your year and go jump in the creek. And by thunder, young fella, Nate would be right. Which is just what I'd expect a faker like you to say. Faker? You never studied medicine a day in your life. I've heard about you. You came here with a quack medicine show. You haven't any more right to call yourself a doctor than, than the blacksmith had. <laughs> the blacksmith's real handy. He helped me set a mighty bad fracture once. That's exactly what I mean. You, you won't even be serious. Hey, shucks, son. I'm too old to be serious. Anybody posing as a qualified practitioner of medicine who isn't is a menace to the community. Now, ain't you being just a little hard on me, young fellow? You... Father. Here's a letter for you from the state capital, Father. I... Uh... Oh, Reckon you're acquainted with Doc Graham, Nancy. I've met Dr. Graham. How do you do? If you'll excuse me, I'll see what this letter's about. Of course. What are you doing here, Dr. Graham? Why, I... There was something I wanted to discuss with your father. Indeed. Perhaps you've been explaining the remarks you passed in town concerning my father. Miss Wiggs, I... Uh, Graham. Yes? I'm going to trouble you to answer one more question. This here in my hand is a letter from the state board. Someone sent the board a report. Was it you? I, uh... Was it? Yes, Mr. Wiggs. It was. You feel you're done right, son? You feel you know enough to be qualified to decide what's right and what ain't in a case like this? I did right. I know I did right. Father, what is it? Nancy, I've been healing folks for a good many years. Maybe the knowledge I got wasn't gained from books, but there's plenty that will say it served just as well as book learning most times, and... Sometimes, maybe you might better. Well, what are you... Healing folks is the only thing I know how to do. And come to think of it, it's the only thing I ever cared to do. But now the state board says I can't no more. They got some newfangled regulations. Either I take some special examinations, which same I ain't likely to pass, never having took the trouble to learn fancy names for plain everyday ailments, or... I'm to take down my shingle. Well, I reckon it'll have to be that last. Thunderation, I kind of feel like Nate must have when Graham here said he wasn't to ride a horse or cuss no more. Dr. Graham, did you do that to my father? I... I did it only because I thought... Get out! Uh, no, honey. Dr. Graham, you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm sorry, I thought If I... it hadn't been for my father, you wouldn't even be here now. The men who fought the engines and outlaws to make it safe for Easterners like you came to my father when they were wounded or sick. They... Okay. Oh, I, I could just slap his face. <laughs> Shucks, you wouldn't slap a good-looking young fella like that, would you, Nancy? Oh, he's hateful. Honey. Yes? You listen to me. Don't you be too ready to misjudge folks. Now take that young fella, for instance. I'll bet he feels real bad about this. Yes, sirree, I'll bet he'd rather have broke a leg than gone through with it. But he done it. Because according to his lights, it was something had to be done. Twan nothing personal to it. I reckon he figures he's done the folks hereabouts a real good turn making me shut up shop. And as for me, well, that ain't so doggone important. Who does my work don't matter. All that matters is, when I step aside, there's someone there to take my place.
A dozen miles to the west, a man was waiting in an abandoned lion cabin. He stood in the open doorway, his eyes searching the brush-covered hills. Suddenly, high on a ridge, he saw the sharp reflection of sunlight on metal. He dodged, too late. <gasps> Half an hour later, a masked man and an Indian drew rein before the cabin. Oh, oh Silver. Oh, oh, oh Scott. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Wagner. Oh, there. There, Peller. What's... Shot, huh? Wagner. Wagner, can you hear me? Him lose plenty of blood. Tonto, someone found out Wagner planned to meet us here. Ah. Uh, Is his heart beating? No. Uh, him still live. Can he stand being carried to town? Ah. Uh, then we've got to get him to a doctor at once. You could look after him, Tonto, but this is just the time when you can't be spared. There's too much for us to do. And if it isn't done, all our work is wasted. Not right. We'll take Wagner into harmony. Uh, Help me with him, Tonto. Let me, me get him on this way. I'll carry him on silver. That evening, young Dr. Graham sat in his darkened office, gloomily staring out at the street. His thoughts were as gloomy as his face indicated. And without being aware of it, he spoke them aloud. There wasn't anything else I could do. You've got to have standards and hold to them. He, well, after all, he's just a quack. He hasn't a right to practice. Pretty daughter, though. I, I wish I... Who's that? Who is it? Dr. Graham? Yes? I have a patient for you outside, Doctor. Uh, one moment. I'll light the lamp. No. Uh, but we'll we'll have... do without a light. I... You're masked? Yes. An outlaw? No. Is this a holdup? I said I have a patient for you. He's been shot and lost a lot of blood. Well, then bring him in, man. Bring him in. If he's badly hurt, we'll... Oh, wait. Well? If I bring him in, you will have to care for him until he can leave. I have quarters behind here. And that isn't all. Nobody must know he's here. No one at all. I don't understand. You're new in this section, aren't you? I've been here a month. Not long enough. It would do no good to explain. You will have to accept my conditions and take my word for it. You'll be involved in nothing outside the law. Take your word? The word of a masked man? Yes. Don't you think that's asking a lot? It is. I can't do it. Bring your friend in. I'll be glad to treat him. I'll do it for nothing if you can't afford to pay me. But the sheriff will have to be told. There's no law requires it. Perhaps not here in the West. Nevertheless, it's a matter of ethics. In a case like this, it's clearly my duty to make a report. Even if you know this man will have to do without your help if you don't agree? I'm not refusing to help. I'm merely refusing your conditions. That's your last word? It is. Very well. But what about... Doctor, you? you've got a lot to learn. I know my duty. You're fortunate you find your duty so easy to recognize. Look here. And here's something to think about. I'm armed and you're not. An outlaw wouldn't try to persuade you with words, Doctor. He'd use lead. Circling town, the masked man and Tonto made their way to the home of Aza Wiggs. Oh, 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 oh. Wait here, Tonto. Me, wait. Want me? Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Shucks, me and Nancy can usually be found out on the porch this time of evening, stranger. You're Dr. Wiggs? Well, I... Father, uh... this man's mad. You needn't be frightened. Honey, don't get upset. But he is, Father, he is. <laughs> well, Nancy, ain't he usually mad? You, you know this man? Hmm, wouldn't go so far as to say that. Did hear what he called his horse, though, and the name he gave the feller he rode up with. <laughs> Lone Ranger, what's on your mind? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, having failed to extract a promise of secrecy from young Dr. Graham, explained the situation to Aza Wiggs. So you want this fellow doctored, but you don't hanker for anyone to know it. Is that the way it is? Right. Just where is this fellow you're speaking of? Across my saddle. He needs attention just as quickly as he can get it. Well, I'd sure like to help you, but... You mean you won't? Stranger, I can't. But I You don't understand. My, My father isn't allowed to practice medicine anymore. He... If he does, he'll get in trouble. In trouble? That's it, Lone Ranger. Nancy's telling you the truth. Got my warning today. Seeing as how I ain't a duly qualified doctor, the state medical board says I ain't to practice no more. <laughs> Seems as if a doke of Ipecac or swig of castor oil won't do you half the good coming for me as it would from a fella that can sport a fancy printed license to hang in his office. It's all the fault of Dr. Graham. He reported, Father. Graham, huh? So you see, friend... Just one you? thing. Huh? I'll have to trust you. Trust me? There's more than this man's life depending on your help, Asa. Yeah? What do you mean? I've been investigating certain activities going on in this district. Through Arizona Lawson, a friend of mine, I got in touch with the fellow I brought here. He agreed to meet me and give me the evidence needed to complete my work. When I reached the meeting place, I found him wounded and unconscious. Unless he lives, everything Tato and I have done so far will end in failure. The smuggling... Father, the masked man must mean the smuggler. Not too loud. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. But was Nancy guessing right, friend, was she? Is it the smuggling you've been working on? Yes, but that's in confidence. Of course. Where to be trusted? Dope has been brought across the border and delivered at a spot not far from here. Then picked up and sold to the Chinese laborers building the railroad. I heard a few things. More has been brought over. Tato and I know where it's hid. We're not touching it, however... Because sometime tomorrow, it'll be called for by a part of the gang. Yeah? As soon as they have it in their possession, I'll send a smoke signal. Tonto, having ridden ahead, will repeat the signal. The border patrol will be watching. And the gang will be arrested with the evidence on them. Then this wounded man, you won't need his evidence after all. I will. The chief of the smugglers won't be with his men. And that's the fellow we want most of all. And it'll take the testimony of the man I brought here to identify him. Why didn't this fellow go to the law with his testimony instead of you? He was a member of the gang once himself, Asa. He'll tell his story to the authorities, but only if I'm on hand to see he gets justice. Yeah, but even so, I don't savvy why his being wounded has to be such a secret. Because I have reason to believe the leader of the smugglers lives here in this town. Oh. Wagner was shot and left for dead. But if word got out he was still alive, and if that news reached the wrong men... There'd be another attempt on Wagner's life. And the second might succeed where the first failed. You explain all this to young Graham, Frank? No. no then what I couldn't I... take the chance, Asa. He's too new to the district. Perhaps he could be trusted and perhaps he couldn't. I had no right to risk it. You're an old-timer, though. And what's more important, you recognized me. I think I can depend on you. Gosh, I don't know. What do you say? I... Take care of Wagner and Tato and I will be on our way. You in all that hurry? We think the dope will be picked up tomorrow. But for all we know, it might be tonight. And we have to be on hand. Well, You can't I... do it, Father. You can't. If Dr. Graham learned you went against the board... It... Doggone, honey. I was just going to say that the masked man better make some other arrangements. It would be fair. But now I ain't. Blast it, maybe I am as poor a doctor as the young fella thinks. Maybe I'm just a stubborn old fool that can't get hauled to broke to doing things legal. Father... But by the great horn spoon... In over 30 years, no man could ever say I turned him down when I was needed. And that's a record I ain't spoiling if they jail me for it. Come on, friend. Show me that wounded fella. Turning Wagner over to old Asa, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode swiftly from town to carry out their part in the campaign against the smugglers. But during the night, young Dr. Graham had thought over the visit the masked man had paid him. The more he examined the incident, the more firmly he became convinced that it should be reported to the sheriff. And in the morning... Well, morning there, Doc. A little early for you, ain't it? Oh, not very. Good morning. Howdy. Morning, Doc. Just a second, Doc, and I'll be with you. Sandy. Yeah? First thing you better do this morning is ride out to Charlie Bates' place. He's been complaining about wire cutters and raising holy Ned because we ain't investigating. Uh-huh. And you, Ed, you ought to see if you can get a line on them prowlers that the widow says she's seen. <laughs> 
if it weren't just her imagination. Excuse me, Sheriff. Yeah? I don't want to interfere, but maybe you'd better listen to me before you send your men out. Huh? You're really here on business? I had a call from a masked man last night, Sheriff. You was held up? I... Why in blazes did you wait till the morning to tell me? Now the trail will be cold. You didn't let me finish. I wasn't held up. He brought me a patient, a man who'd been wounded. Oh. He asked me to treat the fellow in secret. I refused. I told him I'd have to report to you, so they left again. Then what about it? You figure they'd been holding up a stage or something? Either that or a gunfight. Oh, I ain't heard of nothing. That isn't the point. The masked man told me his companion had been seriously hurt. Evidently, he had to be taken somewhere for attention. I, uh, well, I think you should investigate. It's possible they went to Aza Wiggs. Old Doc? All right, what if they did? Well, don't you want to know about the suspicious characters that come to town? <laughs> if they went to Old Doc, he'll handle them. And if the law is needed, he'll say so. Evidently, you don't understand the circumstances. If Aza Wiggs accepted a patient, he's defying the state authorities. He has no right to practice medicine. And he's been informed of the fact. What's that? What's that? I, you, you're joking? I'm not. Wiggs is not a doctor. If he accepts a patient, he's practicing fraud. You sure you're feeling all right, young fella? I know what I'm talking about. I... I happened to be present when he received orders from the state medical board to stop. Young fella, anybody says Doc Wiggs ain't qualified to be a doctor, don't know what he's talking about. And I don't care if it is this your board you speak of. You just try and tell the folks he's took care of he don't know his business. Go to talking like that, mister. And there's some of these old-timers around here that'll just about chaw your ears off. I... <laughs> just, just a second. Mind if I ask a question, Sheriff? Well, go ahead. Doc? Yes? This mask, gent, now, what do you look like? Well, it was dark, and of course I couldn't see his face. Was he long or short or thin or fat? Uh, what would you say? Well, he was tall. Anything else? And, and broad-shouldered. I noticed he spoke as though he'd been educated. That all? Yes. Oh, no, one thing more. When he rode away, I heard him call his horse Silver. Mm. Not much to go by. Think you had a lead, Sandy? No, just wanted a description is all, Ed. Well, Sheriff? Well, what? Are you going to look into this? Why in blazes should I? Because I insist on it. I know you don't like me, Sheriff. You're just like everyone else around here. Because I speak and act and dress like an Easterner, you're prejudiced against me. Well, Easterner or not, I know my duty, even if you don't. And I demand that you investigate what I've told you. If Aza Wiggs didn't take that fellow in, I'll apologize. But if he did, he's liable under the state law, and as sheriff, you have to enforce that law. Come on, boys. Sure sure thing, sir. If it's the law, it's got to be done. But you listen to me, Doc. Well? You get some of them stiff-necked, highfalutin ideas out of your head, or you won't be as popular around here as a skunk in a clothes closet. <laughs> An hour later, high on a shelf of rock, the masked man fed greasewood to a crackling blaze. A great column of thick, oily smoke rose into the air. Thomas should see that, Silver old fellow. <laughs> and when his signal smoke is lit, those smugglers are trapped. A brief interval. Then to the north, an answering smoke. And still farther to the north, a small group of border lawmen knew that smugglers, opium in their possession, were on the move. The Lone Ranger drew back from the fire he built. That's it, boy. Now, a wagoner. Someone coming, Silver. <coughs> Quiet. Oh, Silver, it's Aza's daughter. Yep. Uh, hello there. Wait. Steady, boy. Whoa, whoa, there. Whoa, whoa. No danger. Well, what is it? They're at the house. They're trying to make Father admit Wagner's there. They... Who's at the house? The sheriff and his deputies. How'd they find out? Dr. Graham. How's Wagner? Well, he, he came, too. He can talk, but he's terribly weak. What's your father doing? Is he going to let them have Wagner? Well, he... He won't let them search the house. He's, he's holding them off with a shotgun, but, but he can't hold them much longer. He won't have to. I... Get there as fast as you can. I'm riding ahead. Come on, Silver. Silver! Come on, Silver! Away! Old Aza Wiggs, his eyes flashing fire and his voice shaking with indignation, stood before the door to the wounded man's room with a shotgun held firmly in his hand. Oh, you don't, Sheriff. So help me, you take one step closer to this year door and I'll let you have it. I'm a man of my word, Sheriff, and you're one that knows it. Don't you make me do anything we'll both be sorry for. Asa, get some sense. You get back. You're concealing someone in there. You can't prove it, young fella. We could if you'd let us in. But you ain't getting in. Yeah, and that goes for you too, Ed. You quit edging around to the side there. Stand where you are so I can keep my eye on you. I wasn't going to try nothing, Asa. You would if I give you half a chance. Take it easy, Ed. 
Ace will come around if he'll just let me talk to him for a minute. Hey, where'd Shandy get to? He was here a minute ago. He must have sneaked out. Why, the dog, What's that? What's going on in there? Fight! Open that door! It's latched from inside. Stand away. Ed, bust the door in. Come on, together now. It's coming. One more now. There! Hey, what the... Prisoner for you, Sheriff. Oh, that's Sandy. That's my deputy you got there. And that's the masked crook I told you about, Sheriff. Put up your hands, mister. Your mistake, Ed. You put up your hands. Stand away from that masked man. I still got my shotgun here, and I'm still plum willing to use it. Ace, you can't. You're going to that... let that masked man explain, and then you can decide what to do. But I Wagner, can... Wagner, can you talk now? Can you tell the Sheriff what you were going to tell me? Sure, friend. Tell me what? Sandy Chapman there. Your deputy, Sheriff. He's the dirty coyote that's head of all the smuggling that's been going on. That's a lie, Sheriff. He's free, man. I get proved just what I said, Sheriff. I got orders which wrote out in Sandy's own hand. I can tell you the names of the breeds that have been working with him on the other side of the border. And I can give you the names of the fellas in his gang. He knows all that, Sheriff, because he was once a member of the same gang. I told him the law would deal lightly with him if he gave this testimony. If this feller can back up what he said... He won't spend an hour in jail. I can back it up, Sheriff. And I will. And now maybe you see, Sheriff, why I didn't want it known this fellow was here. I was trying to keep anybody from getting at this fellow to close his mouth. Then then the masked man isn't a crook after all. Him a crook? Why, you blamed idiots. Don't you know who he is? I... He's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Ranger. And there he goes. Well, don't go. Mr. Wiggs, I... I guess I made a fool out of myself. You did that. I... But when a gent that's been a fool admits it, there's some hope for him. Son, a little more aging, and maybe you'll do to take along. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.